Rotation of vegetables, which means growing them in a different place from one year to the next. It's commonly prescribed as being that you should leave a three year interval between growing plants of same family, like say brassicas or alliums, before you grow them again. So that's then called a four year rotation. Actually comes from 18th century farming. I'm not convinced how applicable it is to modern gardening, uh, but I don't really know for sure. And so that's why I'm running a little trial here, just comparing uh, to see where, for example, this is the fifth year in a row of growing cabbages in the same place. It's a little, I'm a little bit vague on the precise number just because at the very start of this trial, I didn't actually have beds quite like this, but it's more or less actually the sixth year in the same place, but to be more correct, it's the fifth year in, in beds like this. And we made a video about this uh, in 2016, three years ago. And if you're interested to compare, do have a look at that one. This is <laughs> going forwards a bit. And so what has actually happened here, say in this cabbage bed is each year we grow broad beans in the winter, through the winter, uh, so November, planted December, harvested 13th of June, and that's when these were planted. So we do a final harvest of the broad beans, 13th of June, in this case, 2019. Clear the plants, we cut them off at the roots and plant cabbages, which were sown a month before that. This is filled a crowd. There's a red cabbage there and a different white one. And basically we've been doing that sequence, broad beans, cabbage, broad beans, cabbage for five years in this strip. And <laughs> draw your own conclusion really, but for me, I'm not yet seeing any deterioration of quality. If you had club root, if you're unlu unlucky enough to be, have club root in, often British allotments have that in the soil, then you do need to rotate cabbage. Otherwise, maybe not so much. I'm not saying it's good not to rotate, but I'm just like to show this as an example. For those of you who maybe like to eat lots of cabbage, you know, then you don't want to wait four years between planting each lot of brassica or cabbage, whatever. So. Um, this is a positive indication here and a bit the same for the leeks where this line we do potatoes as first crop so they go in the ground in in this case this year it was the 12th of april and they were harvested on the 11th of july that was charlotte potatoes so that's been happening every year and this year the fifth year in a row of potatoes we got 48 kilos was actually the highest total of the five years so far <clears throat> which mainly reflects that we had very good weather this spring for potatoes and we gave them one watering just before harvest that swelled the tubers a bit. But basically a really nice harvest. And this is now the fifth year in the row of leeks following. So it's potatoes, leeks, potatoes, leeks, fifth year in a row there. A little bit of rust on the leaves, but actually no more than in other parts of the garden where I'm growing the same leeks, but in different places, not rotating others. So I've got that comparison to make as well. <clears throat> These are still a little bit small, mainly because they went in quite late. They were sown on the 5th of April, planted here 11th of July. And, you know, they've got a bit of time still to grow. The ground is fairly moist, leaks like a lot of water, so we will keep these watered. The potatoes left them pretty dry. But yeah, so far so good, I would say, for year five. And if we move up over here, there's two more lines I can show you a similar story. So these two lines, this one was squash until just a few days ago. Curry winter squash, so that's lovely dark red ones that make a hard skin that you can store for the winter. And basically they, they were ripe and the leaves had died off. So we harvested 20 kilos of squash. And that was the sixth year in a row of squash in this same place. 
not bad, 20 kilos. We have had as much as 55 actually <laughs> from this area. It's just six plants. Um, so this year's harvest was down. The pattern of weather didn't suit their timing of growth quite so well. Um, but I have been wondering actually a little bit, I will do it for one more year. I'm beginning to question that growing squash in the same place for that many years, but we'll see. <laughs> I mustn't jump to a conclusion because this strip next to me, uh, when we were here years ago, and it was a year when we'd had a dry summer and it was really for that reason more than anything, I think uh, the beans weren't looking so brilliant. And I was thinking, you know, I wasn't sure what was causing it, but with the benefit of hindsight, it was definitely the dry weather and we hadn't watered much. Whereas this year, um, we have watered a bit more actually. And this is the seventh year in a row of growing climbing beans, borlottis and runner beans for seed in the same place. Seven years in a row, these beans have been here every summer, planted May, harvested through September, October. And this year, year seven, I haven't got the harvest totals yet, but the bean plants to me actually look pretty much as healthy as I've ever seen them. They look fantastic. All of this ground we are treating in the same way compost wise. We, after the autumn harvest, we spread compost on the surface. It's all no dig, actually with one exception because there's a little trial strip there, but basically it's no dig with all the organic matter on top and compost, no other feeds or fertilizers. So it's just no dig with compost. And whether that plays a part in the health of these plants that could be, you know, if, if you were digging, disturbing ground. For me, that, that's a damaging thing to do. And I think it's one reason why my gardens generally, the plants are very healthy. People often comment on that. I get a lot of lovely comments like on Instagram, you know, why wow, the vegetables, they just look so blooming and, and glossy and shiny and full of color. So this, this trial into no rotation, you know, if you did it with digging, it might give a slightly different result and be not so good, I think. But if you, Really what, what rotation is about is maintaining soil health and vitality uh, reflected in plant growth and vitality. And in the case of classical rotation theory, it's worrying about whether you get a buildup of pests and disease from using the same bit of soil every year for the same plant. And yeah, I would just say from what I'm seeing so far, seven years, six years, five years, is that, um, there's a limit to how far that you need to worry about that. It's not all nonsense, but on the other hand, if you if you have a piece of ground and you, you're not growing many crops and you can't fit in a four year rotation, I, I would say don't worry about it too much. My, my idea would be to leave one year between plants of the same family. I think that's safety first, if you like. But it, even if, if you couldn't do even that, well, maybe try continuous cropping.